Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the second day of the 11 ISOFOL. We are now heading to the plenary session two. The agenda for this session is presentation from Professor Dr. Didi Suhadi and Dr. Loanik Mayani. This session is chaired by the PT Director for Administration of Simio Kitab and Language, Dr. Sumhar Moko. To Dr. Sumhar Moko, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mrs. Uh, Anissa. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. How are you? I hope you are healthy and happy today. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome join to the 11 ISOPOL by online. I hope you are ready and prepare computer, electricity, and internet connection. And please make sure you will join the seminar running well until finish. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention please in a few minutes we will start the seminar. The Honorable Madam Director Sime Kitab and Language, Dr. Luhani Mayani, the Honorable Mr. Professor Dr. Haji Didi Suherdi, the Honorable Mrs. Elsa Nelpi Siagian, Deputy Director Sime Kitab and Language, Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, committee, all participants of the seminar, all the presenter. I respect this this morning proud of the ICEPOL seminar in Asia and out Asia. Who has respect ladies and gentlemen as the host and co-host of this seminar? Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. And very good morning. Ladies and gentlemen, the first let us praise and thank to Subhanahu wa ta'ala, God who is Almighty, because we are already given healthy and safety today, so we can join the seminar. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to introduce my name is Sumar Moko as a moderator in the seminar and reporter is Mrs. Susi Pausia. Ladies and gentlemen, in this ISOPOL seminar with this polling tema is Passing Industrial Revolution 4.0 Through Language Education. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen of the seminar participant people, the first keynote speaker delivered the presentation begin, allow me introduce to you. Mr. Professor Dr. Hatch Didi Suherti, M.E.D. as the first speaker. Mr. Didi Suherti, uh, he was born in Subang, 1st of November 1962, and he is a professor in teaching methodology of English language in Universitas Pendidikan Bandung. He lived in Bandung and he has graduated from bachelor in Bahasa Inggris 1986 at IKI Bandung and he has finished his master degree in Pendidikan Bahasa Inggris 1995 at the University of Melbourne teaching English to speaker of the other language. And he has doctoral degree from education, especially in language at University Pendidikan of Indonesia. Professor Didi Suherdi MED is a professor and currently he is the chairman of English language education studies. He is responsible for the administration of the bachelor Master and Doctoral Program in English Language Education in Universitas Pendidikan Indonesia, Bandung, Indonesia. He has also had a lot of training. He has training in teaching English, Lembaga Indonesia Amerika 1989, 
Also, yes, professor, professional development school at the Ohio State University, 1997. Language teaching model, 2000 and 2001, Indiana University, Bloomington. Building capacity of Simeo and establishing MTP multilingual education, Simeo Initech, Philippine. Also, study visit effective and sustainable MLA program, MLA program Kansara Buri, Thailand. Also, academic leadership 2015 University Pendidikan of Indonesia. 27 AUN KA training for accomplishing program assessment, ASEAN Quality Assurance, Secretariat Bangkok. Also, 10 NAUN KA tier second workshop for assessor, ASEAN Quality Assurance, Secretariat Bangkok. Also, micro teaching 2020 at UPI Bandung. There is a lot of book, also journal-journal that create Mr. Professor Didi. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, party vision of the 11 ICPOL seminar, let me start listen the best presentation. The best presentation will be delivered by Mr. Professor Dr. Hadi D. Suherdi, MED, and the topic, Teacher Roles in Fostering Student Independent and Autonomous Learning. Mr. Professor Dr. D. D. Suherdi, we are prepared time for your presentation and allocate it in 20 minutes. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen of the seminar participant, if you are have any question about this topic, please write your question addressed to the keynote speaker and send to the chat box. Thank you. Mr. Professor Didi Suherdi, MED, floor is yours. Well, thank you, Pak Moko, as the moderator. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I am very happy to have you all here. Of course, you are autonomous learners from different parts of Indonesia and also different parts of the world. So in this 20 minutes, I would be talking about teachers' roles in fostering learner autonomy. But first, let me share the screen. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, to help you understand the topic, my talks would, book, would be concerning the 21st century world education, autonomous, sub-regulated and independent learning, and then the roles of the teachers in fostering learner autonomy, and we we'll end up with concluding remarks. Now let's start with the first, century world education. We'll be talking about interconnection and new technologies, the 21st century skills, 21st century learners, and of course, we, we will also be talking about COVID-19 pandemic. Now, as we know, and we understand that our world is now getting more and more borderless, more, more and more interconnected. And Industry 4.0 brings to us, educators, some relevant technologies, new technologies, better connection, big data, cloud computing, automation, IoT, and system integration, and of course, many other things. In relation to education, for example, big data may help us in helping students in choosing 
future career into, I mean, personalized teaching and education, enhancing quality of teaching and analyzing students' participation. Meanwhile, automation can help us in make our in making our uh, teaching, learning, and our education system more efficient, faster, and more accurate through robotic process automation in many parts of our educational system. And IoT may help us in making a better connected and collaborative future, for example, in building cyber school in which we will have a smart school office, smart school transportation, smart management, smart classroom, labs, cafeteria, and many other things. And cloud computing will help us with analyzing huge number of data with a variety of data and in very high speed velocity. To sum up, and I want you to be aware that new technologies would help us in improving students' engagement, reach of education, students' motivation, education automation, staff attendance, quicker learning, multi-channel learning, anytime learning, anywhere learning, and personal learning, and many other things. So in other words, with the emergence of these technologies, now we are faced with new challenges, new demands, and in fact, new skills to be developed in ourselves and our students, especially the 21st century skills. Look at this. So what is in priority today is the ability to create, the ability of critical, critical tank thinking, connection, citizenship, collaboration, communication and curation, and many other things, of course. But at least we should develop in our students the four C's of education, communication, critical thinking, creativity, and collaboration. So our learner today should at least have information literacy, innovation, and critical thinking, as well as creativity, communication, problem solving, and collaboration competencies. In a more sophisticated picture, we would develop our students into engaged thinker, ethical citizen, and entrepreneurial spirit through the development of all subject matter and discipline areas in our curriculum, supported by critical thinking and problem solving skills, creativity and innovation, social responsibility and cultural, global and environmental awareness, communication, digital literacy, lifelong learning, self-direction, which will be our topic today, and personal management and collaboration and literacy. So ladies and gentlemen, now I would also invite your attention to our situation today, to the COVID-19 pandemic, because the number is continually increasing and the fatalities are getting going and going beyond our capacity to handle. And especially with the protocol. Now we should observe uh, the protocol, including physical distancing, social distancing, working from home and learning from home. And in this situation, we don't have any escape. We cannot avoid the reality that online learning is 
a must. And based on the nature of online learning and the demands of the 21st century skills, autonomous learning and learning autonomy is also a must. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, so we must accustom ourselves to technologies, to learning autonomy, and now we come to our main, our core discussion. I'll be talking about learning autonomy, the nature of learning autonomy, and then the teacher's roles in fostering learning autonomy, and again, we'll end up with conclusion. So, talking about learning autonomy, we'll be talking about learning independent and independent learning. Learning autonomy and self-regulated learning. I would rather see them in a continuum. So learning independent, we would develop our students in our student independent learning. For that, we need to develop learning autonomy through self-regulated learning. So now the very core is the roles of teachers in fostering learning autonomy. Now let's begin with familiar, familiarizing ourselves with learning autonomy stages. So a learning autonomy might start with identifying learning needs and then followed by setting goals, planning learning, selecting resources, selecting strategies, practice, monitoring progress, self-assessment and revision, and come back to identifying new learning needs, new goal settings and so on. And it would be repeated up to the end of the program. Now the question is why do we need to be involved in students' learning autonomy? I would give you two notes from Alonazi and El Hanawi, which is re relevant to our uh, talk today. First, learner autonomy is sometimes misunderstood in a way that it can be realized without the teacher. I would say it is not, it is not true. In fact, teachers are responsible for developing students autonomous learning through their roles and practices in the classrooms. And each self-regulatory process or belief, such as goal setting that we discussed earlier, and then strategy use, self-evaluation can be learned from instruction and modeling by parents, teachers, coaches, and even peers. So in fact, self-regulated students seek out help from others to improve their learning. Now, so what are our roles actually? Many. There's a long list of teachers' roles in fostering learning autonomy. But I would argue that the main roles are three. As designers, facilitators, and assessors. As designers, teachers are expected to choose an appropriate LMS for their class to select appropriate resources, to develop or select assessment tools, and to develop lesson planning. In relation to LMS, we already know that there are abundant number of LMSs available in the market. And here are the data from uh, some elements is used in United States, Canada, United Kingdom, and Australia. It includes Blackboard, 
uh, learn and then instruct your Canvas, D2L, Brightspace, Moodle, Sakai, and other. And here are the data. Well, in relation to learning resources, also we have so many learning resources available in the market on vocabulary, speaking, grammar, listening, business, and many other things. And in terms of assessment tools, today's learning needs a very comprehensive, holistic assessment. But the main point is the assessment is for the betterment of the students. So it may include portfolios, students' blog, and then products and graphical organizers. It would be uh, including self-assessment, such as journal, self-report, and then conferences, checklists, website, and other things. And in relation to lesson planning, there are so many things to do, but I would rather concentrate on the teaching and learning activities that should be in constructively aligned with the learning outcomes and the learning assessment. So at least it should be including, oh sorry, birds, slope and FA. So what are they? So birds commonly is commonly introduced in the first meetings. Bird standing, bird stands for um, building good reports. So you should be teaching in a relaxed, friendly, and pleasing situation for the students. So the students would develop their self learning autonomy and then introduce the steps don't take it for granted introduce the steps introduce what they should complete and accomplish in each step and then raise their motivation do simulation beginning from how to register into the lms how to open uh, learning materials how to open assignment how to do and upload their assignment. And then after everything is clear, send, upload and send the first assignment for them. And then they will come to the second stage that is slow, standing for searching, learning, organizing, presenting and evaluation. And then end up with feedbacks and assignment. So the feedbacks, not only about their learning, the materials of learning materials and experiences, but also how they develop the learning autonomy stages. Ladies and gentlemen, so designing activities includes not only designing learning materials, learning experience, but also learning autonomy stages development. Now, as facilitators, you must be willing to help them, to answer their queries, to monitor their working procedure, to help them when needed, and to give necessary feedbacks. Of course, this would be different in different modalities. For example, in blended learning, you would be expected to help students in small group work, collaborative work, individual work, and in online learning work. And in flipped classroom, you may start facilitating them before the class, when the students learn the learning materials and try to do the exercises. And then in during the class, when they have they do the PE present, presentation and uh, evaluation and after the class, when they do the next assignment and also the revision. And in pure online modality, you would be expected to facilitate students, but in synchronous 
and in asynchronous sessions. So ladies and gentlemen, facilitating again includes not only facilitating students in understanding, mastering learning materials and experience, but also in developing learning autonomy. Now, how about SSSs? So SSSs, you are expected to assess their works, to motivate them to do self-assessment of their works, and then to clarify students' strengths and weaknesses, and based on them, to help them improve their works. So you should be, again, relaxed, pleasing, helpful in assessing students' work. So the students would consider that assessment is part of their learning rather than part of your judgment and bonus and verdict. Uh, and encourage them to do self-assessment. Teach them how to self-assess their works using rubrics. And then facilitate them also to identify their strengths and weaknesses. And based on them, try to assess their progress along the path of their uh, learning paths from using, utilizing prior learning to do all the new understanding and then come to the final goal that they need to reach. So the important notes here are assessing activities include not only assessing learning materials mastery, and experience, but also learning autonomy development. So ladies and gentlemen, in conclusion, there are three major roles in uh, learning autonomy supported technology. I mean, technology supported teaching. In designing, try to design, not to frame students in a rigid and very static way. And then in facilitating, try to scaffold, not spoon feed. And in assessing, assess, not only score their mastery. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you. Pak Moko. Thank you, Mr. Professor Dr. Didi Suherdi, MED that presentation are very informative and interesting to us which can provide motivation and increase knowledge and insight and in learning in the field of language thank you very much prof didi you are very welcome pomoko now distinguished ladies and gentlemen of the seminar participant before the second keynote speaker deliver the presentation begin. Allow me introduce to you, Madam Dr. Luani Mayani, M. Whom as the second keynote speaker. Dr. Luani Mayani is a, a, a director of Sime Kitab and Language. She holds a doctoral degree in linguistic from University of Cologne, German funded by DDAD in 2010 until 2014. She received her master's degree in linguistic in 2004 and bachelor in English language in 2001 from Udayana, Bali. Dr. Lu Anik Mayani started her career as a writer of IFL Indonesian as foreign language teaching material in the Agency of Language Development and Qualification Ministry of Education and Culture Republic of Indonesia. As a team, she had her colleges wrote their three IFL teaching material Lentera Indonesia. 
Tingkat pemula is a AFL teaching material for beginner 2004 Lentera Indonesia and IFL teaching material for intermediate level 2006 and Lentera Indonesia. IFL teacher material advanced level 2007. In addition to writing IFL teaching material, she was also visiting lecture of IFL classes in Daikin University, Un Australia in 2006, and Munster University, German in 2008, in El Orientale University, Napoli, Italy in 2017. She had an experience as an instructor of language documentation for some workshop among trees held by Lipi Indonesian Institute of Science in 2015 in Jakarta. She was an independent reviewer for research grant application of the Enlarged Language Documentation program SOES London. She is a reviewer of several national academic journal, among others, Journal Linguistic Indonesia, Journal Kapata Archaeology, Journal Aksara, Journal Kandai at present. She is the current president of Indonesian Linguistic Society among the many professions and experiences she has. She is a language researcher. She has published many papers and articles in the field of linguistics, some of which were present in the national and international fora. A number of her latest publications are Avaricates, National Absources, Sequences, and Brussels, Asian in Taiju, 2016, in Linguistic Indonesia, with class classification in Taiju, 2017, in NUSA Linguistic Studies of Languages in Raon, Indonesia, and Consonant Seminetis in Simalungun Language 2017 in Linguistic Indonesia. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, participation of the ISOPOL 17 seminar, let me start listen the second presentation. The second presentation will be delivered Mrs. Dr. Luhani Mayani M. Hum, and the topic SIPB an Indonesian spelling checker, an innovative way to improve competency in written Indonesia. Mrs. Dr. Luhani Mayani M. Hum, we are prepared time for presentation in 20 minutes. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen of the seminar participant, if you have any question about this topic, please write your question addressed to the keynote speaker and send to the chat box. Dr. Luh Anik Mayani M. Hum, floor is yours. Thank you very much, uh, Pak Moko. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, a very good morning. Thank you uh, for your patience, yeah, waiting and attending uh, this uh, second day of uh, ISOFOL. Uh, first of all, uh, please let me uh, share my screen. Okay, can you see my screen, Pamuko? Yes, clear. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, Bapak Ibu, ladies and gentlemen, uh, today I will talk about CPB, an Indonesian spelling checker, an innovative way to improve competency in written Indonesian. Um, I would like to tell you that my confirmation as keynote speaker in this ISO fall was done before I work at Simeo Kitabin language. So before working at Simeo Kitabin language, I work for Badan Bahasa, so the Agency of uh, Language Development and Cultivation. And CPB is one of my initiatives which is now developed by uh, Badan Bahasa. 
So uh, before we uh, or I introduce what CPEBI is, so let me uh, give you a background why CPEBI would be advantages for language learning. So some points I want to share in this presentation is first is the typological uh, word formation of Indonesian language. And the second one is about common mistakes in written Indonesia. And the third one is, um, I will introduce you the prototype of CPEBI. So the, the long form is Aplikasi Penyuntingan Ejaan Bahasa Indonesia, so in, an Indonesian spelling checker, and why CPEBI and its further development. Bapak Ibu, so uh, Indonesian is an agglutinative language. So um, why? Because Indonesian words can be divided into two forms. We have independent forms or free forms and we do have derived forms. An example of uh, independent forms, for example, is the word uh, duduk. Yeah, so uh, we don't need any affixes, then we can uh, clearly understand what duduk is. And uh, for other words, for example, menidurkan or didudukkan, we need affixes here. And the affixes and the root forms in Indonesian can be clearly um, identified. And that's why, according to Sopen 2007, so in, uh, in terms of its word formation, Indonesian, can be defined as uh, an agglutinative language because its complex word forms can be uh, clearly uh, segmented. For example, here, menidurkan consists of men, tidur, and kan, and etc. So uh, the next one is about some grammatical forms in Indonesian. We have affixes, we have uh, prepositions, for example. In verbal affixes, not to mention all, I can uh, provide you some examples here. We have uh, active marker such as men, and then we also have a uh, passive marker D. And in terms of uh, its for its form, D uh, as a verbal affix, yeah, has the same form with a, a preposition D meaning at in English. And other uh, preposition, for example, ke, has the same form uh, with preposition ke. Uh, so from this uh, example, we will see how these forms will be complicated uh, sometimes for uh, Indonesian speaker to, uh, to write it in a correct way. Yeah, so uh, I want to I want to show you here that some grammatical forms in Indonesia uh, have the same form, but they have different function and meanings. So based on that background, so uh, in this um, uh, point, I would like to uh, to to stress that I will not differentiate between mistakes and error because sometimes uh, there are researchers who, uh, you know, strictly uh, define which one is mistake and which one is error. Why? Because I haven't uh, done a research whether the common mistakes in, in, in written Indonesia is a, a mistake or an error. Yeah, I didn't uh, really define that the mistakes is done because they're familiar to so the first common mistakes I found as an instructor of Indonesian language is the people or Indonesian speaker fail to differentiate the prefix D yeah, or K and the uh, preposition D and K. Let's see the following examples. D is a voice active marker while D meaning at is a preposition. So as a Passive voice marker, D should be attached to the root or the stem. Uh, but as a preposition, it is not attached to the noun. For example, when we uh, write D makan, it should be uh, written as one word. Yeah? And then when we use D as a preposition, we should write it, um, you know, separated from uh, the, the word uh, attached to it. 
So uh, the other forms that we still find is that uh, the Indonesian speakers write di makan with a blank space. On the contrary, uh, they write di atas without blank space, yeah, which is not acceptable. The other example is with the for verbal marker ke and ke uh, meaning to as a preposition. As a verbal marker, ke should be attached to the root or the stem, and ke as a preposition is not attached to the noun. So this is the correct form, but we can still find that people will write ke space luar, meaning uh, a verbal, uh, it is uh, an action, meaning to go out. Uh, on the contrary, they will write a ke luar as one word, meaning to outside, yeah, which should be written as ke space luar. And the second uh, common mistake is that uh, Indonesian speaker fail to apply the affixation rules. Uh, in this case, the um, uh, assimilation rule of the active marker men. So these are the common rules. We know that men uh, followed by uh, ke um, as the, the first um, phoneme of the stem or the root, it becomes men. So we know that already, but when we form the words, then we are sometimes confused how to write mengkonsumsi, which uh, is the correct form, or mengonsumsi. Yeah. So uh, in this slide, I'll show you the correct form uh, of mengonsumsi or mengkonsumsi is the second one. Yeah, and then uh, the, the peduli mempedulikan or memedulikan, uh, the correct form is memedulikan, but some of us still uh, write it as mempedulikan, for example. So which one is the correct form, mentargetkan or menargetkan? The correct form is menargetkan, but uh, many people still write it as mentargetkan. And the last one, the, the correct form is, of course, menyukseskan, not mensukseskan. Okay, um, the other common mistake is that people fail to differentiate the affixes of kan and an in certain word formation, especially when roots or stem ends with k. So, example here are the per an and pen an as nominalization compared to men kan and di kan as verbalization. In words like perburukan yeah, or penunjukan, we still can see there are two forms uh, written by Indonesian uh, speaker. So um, perburukan and perburukan. So in this case, we knew that the correct form uh, or the correct affixes is per an or pen an, not per or pen kan. Yeah? And uh, same case happened to verbalization. In order to write memasukkan, yeah, people, uh, we can still see mistakes when they write memasukkan. So the correct formation is with men kan, not with men an or di an. Now let's see the other uh, mistakes. So people or Indonesian speaker fail to identify bound morphemes. Thus it is written as free morphemes. For example, antar is a bound morpheme. But we can still see many written form. Um, it uses antar siswa as two words. It should be written as one word: antar siswa, antioxidan, and etc. And other uh, mistakes is that uh, Indonesian speaker fail to write compound words correctly, especially when they are attached to affixes. 
For example, we have compound word uh, kerjasama, tanggung jawab, or tanda tangan. So when uh, this compound word only uh, have one affix, either prefix or um, what is it? Um, uh, yeah, for example, only prefix, then the correct form is that this compound word is still uh, written with space, yeah, as two words, bekerja sama. But when it has affixes, for example, per an, then we have to uh, write it as one word and etc. So other mistake is that um, there are many, uh, many speakers who are, um, yeah, they are still uh, fail to recognize the standard forms of Indonesian word as listed in uh, Indonesian Comprehensive Dictionary. For example, we still uh, see that many people write system uh, instead of system as the correct form. Koordinir, yeah, the incorrect form and the correct uh, or standard form is koordinasi. Same case happened to legalisasi, standardisasi, teoretis, apotek, and etc. And other mistakes is that uh, people still fail to write the standard forms of Indonesian word as it is influenced by the way uh, people pronounce the words or phonemes. For example, uh, Indonesian has um, F and V, yeah? but we pronounce both of them as F. Other case, uh, we have F, yeah. Uh, and uh, P, yeah, P for um, what is it? Uh, the written form, but both are sometimes still pronounced as P, P, yeah. And other case, uh, we have a Z, yeah, Z, but we pronounce it sometimes as Z or S and even J, yeah. So let's see uh, the correct and incorrect form. So because of these uh, um, uh, reasons, provinci, for example, as uh, 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 because of the failed of pronouncing a V, for example, and it is then written as provinci with P, while the correct or standard form is with V. Same case happen, uh, happened to activitas, ijazah, or zaman. Now, um, other uh, failure is that uh, we fail to use uh, correct uh, punctuation in abbreviation. These are the example, yeah. Uh, we should use uh, dots, but then some people still write it with, um, you know, this uh, slash. And uh, other misuse of punctuation is that uh, misuse of punctuation before conjunction. For example, we don't need comma before sehingga, uh, we don't need comma before karena, and etc. Okay, now those are uh, examples of common mistakes in Indonesian. Now, what is Sipebi? So as an uh, aplikasi penyuntingan ejaan bahasa Indonesia, uh, CPB is aim to do some function. Uh, it, it is hoped to, uh, to be able to use, to check uh, the use of letters, to check the word formation in Indonesia, to check the use of punctuation, and to check the standard form of words based on the uh, Kamus Besar Bahasa Indonesia or Indonesia, uh, Comprehensive Indonesian Dictionary. And uh, CPB enable language users to check the Indonesian spelling of uh, a TXT file. Now, uh, let me introduce you the prototype of uh, CPB. So CPB is applicable for Windows 7, 8, and 10. CPB is not merely a spelling checker, but it also functions as a teacher. It provides analysis of errors made by users.
And CPEB uses the same database as the KBBE5. So the menu bars of CPEB, it consists of um, Benahi text, yeah. This menu is, uh, is used to correct or edit the text. It has um, daftar baku or uh, the table of correct words in Indonesia. Uh, and in this uh, menu, users may add correct words in the provided list. And we also provide correct words listed in KBBI. And we have here the user profile and we have setting and we also have a menu about CPB, which provides information about CPB and list of errors detected by this application. And uh, let's see what is inside CPB. So uh, by using CPB, you are able to uh, upload your text here, yeah, in this part, and then uh, with it with just one click, you will have uh, your edited text on the um, right hand column. And CPB uh, has this uh, load function, uh, edit function, save function, and analysis uh, function. And uh, it also reports uh, how, 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 how long is the text edited, numbers of errors in the text, length of text, and um, also the time span to edit the text. And here is the example, yeah, I zoom it out. So uh, in this uh, left-hand column, you can put your or upload your original text with one click perbaiki or edit, then you will have your edited text on the right-hand column. And after that, uh, in order to, uh, to teach learners or users about the errors uh, they did, so uh, CPEB uh, provides uh, the analysis. Yeah? So this analysis aims to provide basic knowledge of Indonesian language in terms of spelling or word formation it gives explanation on errors made by language users. Thus, it is expected that language users can learn the correct forms and be aware not to repeat the same mistakes uh, and use the correct forms in the future. So a list of errors detected by CPEB, they are about 23, um, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and I show you uh, before only eight types of errors, common errors. So um, what are the challenging parts when we develop this CPEB? Um, the first one is the morphological processes in Indonesian language. As we know, this uh, man, uh, active marker can be uh, realized as mum, man, manya, mung, and etc. And for this application, it is still hard to do it uh, automatically. And the second challenging part is the ambiguous uh, grammatical form. Same form, different function, as I showed you before. So it is still um, hard for the application to identify which D is prefix and which D is a preposition. And other um, uh, ambiguous uh, example is uh, when this application should notice that antar as a verb and antar as a bound morpheme. So uh, the, uh, the strength of this uh, prototype is it, it, is, um, uh, it has the built-in database, in this case, the database of KBBE5, and then it has also list of correct words. And um, we still, uh, in this uh, application, we still have the custom, uh, customized data. This data can be added manually by the users. 
So these are the example uh, of the customized data. Uh, for the ambiguous words, we have to put it um, uh, manually, bound morphemes, professional phrases, and so on. And just for your information, for the database of the CPB, uh, is taken from the KBBE5. And the total uh, entry numbers of this uh, dictionary is about uh, 112,000 uh, um, word forms. And uh, for your information also, the updates of KBBE is done twice a year in April and October. So we can be sure that the database of CPB is also updated. And why CPB? Yeah, why would we would like to develop this uh, um, uh, application? We believe that CPEBI is a breakthrough relevant with the Industrial Revolution 4.0 in language development based on digital technology. And uh, we believe that uh, CPEBI changing the, the language behavior of Indonesian speaker, uh, in this case, promoting people to use good and correct Indonesian, especially in writing. And uh, CPEB also changed the model of language learning from linguist or teacher or instructor, uh, instructor as a, a source in learning and language learning to the use of technology. And CPEB could be uh, a mean of learning Indonesian language and as a language teacher without being a teacher. So what are the benefits or technical supports provided by CPB? CPB could facilitate assist or speed up editing work. So uh, users can also be able to minimize error in the use of Indonesian spelling in written text. And we would like that Indonesian users who write in Indonesian will become their own language editor. And the uh, further development of CPB is that um, to enable CPB to provide correct morphological forms of nasal prefixes, uh, prefixes uh, and enable CPB to automatically differentiate the prefix D, for example, and the uh, preposition D and enable CPB to detect ambiguous words. Um, uh, ladies and gentlemen, and Pat Moko, that's all I, uh, I can share today. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you, Madam Dr. Luhani Mayani M. Hum. That presentation are uh, very informative, interesting to us. We can provide motivation and increase knowledge and insight and learning in the field of language. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, let us together to say thank you for both Mr. and Mrs. Keynote Speaker. Thank you very much, Mr. Professor Dr. Didi Suherdi, MAD, and Mrs. Dr. Luhani Mayani, M. Whom they was already delivered their presentation for us. Their presentation are very informative, interesting, and give us the best an example for their experiences, also their to guide us how to learn slang with. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, participants of the IC poll, the presentation, first and second keynote speaker has been completely delivered. Let us to continue the new agenda that is a question and answer. We are still have a time for a few minutes. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, please write your question, then send to your question to address to the keynote speaker. And, and send to the chat box, the keynote speaker also can be answered directly. Address to Professor Dr. Didi Suherdi from Mrs. Sinta Devi University Pendidikan Indonesia, maybe your student also, Professor. <laughs> what should we do in the encourage of self as a teacher when we face to face with a challenging situation? like some students have no motivation and often time leave the class half away of the learning, how should we build a good rapport with the students so that they can trust to us? 
join the class and learn wool hardly. Please, Professor, to answer this question. Your mic still uh, mute, Professor. Please, uh, thank you. Okay. Well, thank you, Ms. Dew Sinta Dewi. So this is our great job, our big job in trying to educate, not only teach English, teach Japanese, teach French, or teach any other languages, but also to educate them to be the native of the 21st century education. So in my experience is that we need to go extra miles. We need to change ourselves and uh, we need to try to see what they prefer to do. Like in my class, in SMA because, you know, I often uh, borrow a class from the teacher and then I would be teaching about a half of a semester. So uh, this is my experience. I know that they, they want to speak English, but they hate learning English. So that's why when I come to the class, I only bring with them their friends with violin, with keyboard, and with uh, uh, singers. Why? Then we try to sing a song. We try to be happy, but you know, the song that I chose at the time is I'm gonna love you like I'm gonna lose you by Megan Trainer. And everybody sang, especially the rap, yeah, the refrain. Okay, what I mean is that sometimes we don't need to hurry. We should be relaxed, we should be strategic. Why? Because when they develop their motivation, when their motivation are raised, and when they, they trust us, so teaching would be fun. Learning would be pleasing. And that's what I do. The question would be, so how about the time? My belief always, when the students are motivated, they would run across the uh, race course. But when they are not motivated, they will be like, uh, we will be like, uh, you know, pulling, uh, dragging broken cars. It would be very difficult. So the keywords is going extra miles, going beyond the usual way of doing teaching. Be their friends, okay? And I would say, I always say, raised, erased English or languages on the schedule. Replace it by fun and entertain. I mean, entertainment. So I call it edu entertainment. So that is what I can say, uh, Sinta Dewi, and the students would be different, totally different. Because in, in, in foreign language, especially the students would be frightened, then they would be take no attention, unengaged, but with trying to be their friends, trying to go extra miles and trying to provide smooth learning paths for them. So what I experienced, what I did, it worked. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Professor Didi. 
And the next question addressed to Dr. Luh Ani Mayani from Panca Wulandari DA HIS Secondary School Lembang. Apa, uh, the question is, apakah di dalam CPB dapat uh, penggunaan, maksudnya apakah di dalam CPB terdapat penggunaan pun? Mohon Ibu, uh, please Ibu Luhani to answer this question. Uh, thank you Pak Muko. Uh, yeah. Should I address this question in Indonesia as well? Yes. Ya, yeah, oke. Okay. Uh, uh, Ibu Panca, terima kasih pertanyaannya. Untuk si PB, uh, kita ingin mengembangkan si PB ini untuk bisa mengenali semua bentuk terikat. Termasuk pun. Ya, mungkin tadi tidak saya contohkan, tapi nanti memang menjadi kompleks karena pun itu ada yang ditulis terpisah dan ada pun yang uh, ditulis uh, serangkai. Misalnya uh, dalam uh, apapun yang artinya saja, dalam konteks siapapun bisa datang, sepun so um, harus kita tulis terpisah. Kemudian, uh, kita lawankan dengan kata sekalipun misalnya. Nah, itu uh, yang ditulis uh, serangkai. Nah, seperti yang saya contohkan tadi di dengan uh, sebagai prefiks yang harus di, uh, di ditulis serangkai dan di sebagai proposisi yang ditulis terpisah, si PB sudah uh, kita buat untuk bisa mengenalinya. Demikian juga dengan kata pun. Tapi sekali lagi aplikasi ini sedang dikembangkan dan uh, selain lain pun di bentuk-bentuk lain yang harusnya serangkai atau dipisah juga akan dikenali oleh si PB. Begitu Bu uh, Panca, semoga saya menjawab. Terima kasih. Oke, okay, thank you uh, Madam Luhani the, about this answer from this question. I still have any question? One more question, that is the question addressed to Professor Dr. Didi Suherdi. Uh, the question came from Edita Lembaga Bahasa Internasional University Indonesia. The question is, based on your experiences, how to motivate students who has lack of motivation during the class, especially in online class? Please, Professor, to answer this question. Okay, thank you, Edita. Actually, there is no simple answer to this question. But I would say that Actually, students want to learn, but the way we do teaching and the way we approach them sometimes make, makes them uh, frightened. And so that's why we need to be very uh, close to them. And in this framework, what I call uh, PE, PSLA, that is Technology Supported Learning Autonomy. So what to do is not only uh, teaching them materials, but also approaching them, leading them how to set the goals, how to see the learning outcome statement as clear as possible. Normally, when it is modeled, when examples are presented and then explained in a <clears throat> good uh, way, then the students would be encouraged, motivated to try at least. And this is the way. So it is very, very delicate. And that is teaching. And I believe teaching cannot be done by anybody. Only teachers can teach. Only teachers can teach. Meaning that teaching is a very complicated system of helping others to help themselves. So I hope that Ms. Aditya would be trying to be friendly with the students and then to approach them and The main point is seeing them as potentially the same as others. The, the motto of modern education is every student 
can be successful, but not in the same time, not in the same day. Meaning they need more practice, they need more help, and by technology, it's all possible. Thank you. Thank you, Professor. That is uh, answers quite clear about to answer the question. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, that is a uh, very sorry that this time is over. We have over time about 10 minutes. Actually, we had a lot of questions in the chat box. Sorry, it's over time. Uh, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, finally we come to the end of part of seminar. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, let us together say thank you for to both of keynote speaker, Mr. Professor Dr. Didi Suherdi and Mrs. Dr. Luh Anik Mayani. Well, ladies and gentlemen, the seminar participant who I respect, we have completed the presentation of the first and second keynote speaker and the session of question and answer. Ladies and gentlemen of the speaker, we would like to thank you for their presentation. I hope the material presented is useful for us in building education through the language. Once again, we would like to thank Professor Dr. Didi Suherdi, MED, and Mrs. Dr. Luh Anik Mayani, and whom invited all the participants, presenters, and ladies and gentlemen, speakers, seminar, participants, and the committee. Thank you, and apologies if there are any differences and mistakes in this seminar. See you again in the seminar of SQL, Semiquitab, and Language, and the 12th. I say Paul in 2021. Congratulations and the seminar joined the parallel second two. Ladies and gentlemen, keynote speaker, participant, committee, thank you for your cooperation. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Wabilai topik walidaya. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. We are heading to the closing ceremony of the 11 ISOFOL. For the first agenda, may we invite Dr. Luanik Mayani, Director of Simu Kitab and Language, to deliver executive summary and closing remarks of the 11 ISOFOL. To Dr. Luanik Mayani, the floor is yours. Thank you, um, Mbak Nisa. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please um, uh, may I pay for your attention. So um, after conducting the 11 ISO fall, there are some points that uh, we have uh, concluded in our sessions from uh, yesterday and today's uh, meeting. So uh, there are some points that I want to uh, read uh, for you um, and for us it is um, very uh, important in order to be the basis of the development of program at Simeo Kitab in language for the coming years. So the, the first point that we can conclude from from our symposium is that the Industrial Revolution 4.0 is characterized on the development of digital technology. With the help of interconnectivity through Internet of Things, access to real-time data, and the introduction of cyber physical systems, the IR 4.0 will make the movement of the industrial world and the type of work needed. It can be said that IR 4.0 has undoubtedly affected the roles of which today's students will be prepared and the roles of teachers in dealing uh, the development of information and technology in educational contexts. The rapid uh, pace of technological development in this era resulted in the new trends in language education. The learning can be taken anytime, anywhere, as the e-learning tools and application for self 
face learning. Students will learn not only the language knowledge itself, but also develop practical skills in terms of using the technology they will encounter in the future jobs. Furthermore, students will be exposed to more project-based learning as a way to teach. Uh, sorry, I cannot see. Um, can you uh, please? Uh, yeah, thank you. <clears throat> so uh, furthermore, students will be exposed to more project-based learning as a way to teach them to collaborative creativity, critical thinking, and communication skills. Ultimately, language education in IR 4.0 must pro provide opportunities for students to help their ability to understand and evaluate issues interconnected with real life. The third point, teachers will play three important roles to support the transition of learning system to build an autonomous students. First, as a designer. Second, the teacher is a facilitator. And last, teacher is an assessor. And the fourth point is that during two-day symposium, keynote speakers and presenters share their insight on how to face IR 4.0 through language education. And the fifth point, in conclusion, teachers, schools, government, and parents should rethink the education in IR 4.0. Today's teacher must adapt certain, uh, could you please move the screen uh, upward? Yeah. So today's teachers must adapt certain changes brought by the IR 4.0 and shift the role of teacher and the learning process, which is suitable to prepare students with 21st century skills. Hopefully, in this way, we can take maximum advantage of the opportunities brought by the IR 4.0 for the future education and be ready to prepare the next generation to be engaged in the world along smart alongside smart technologies so uh, those are the points that we can summarize during our today's uh, symposium thank you very much for your kind attention thank you dr luanik next is group photo sessions May we invite Board of Director of Simio Kitab and Language, distinguished presenters and participants to put your best position for virtual photo session. Please be ready. Let me count. One, two, three. We take one more photo, please. One, two, three. Thank you. Uh, excuse me, Miss Anissa. I think I forgot to uh, to do the closing ceremony. Actually, what I did just now is just uh, reading the executive summary. <laughs> sorry for yes. the inconvenience. Yes. So uh, I'm so sorry, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Ibu Bapa, maybe. We are getting starving because it's already um, 12 past seven. So uh, to be quick, uh, let me um, let me greet once again our honorable guests uh, after conducting a very intensive virtual symposium yesterday and today. And we are now uh, about to close uh, the, the 11 isopole. The center expresses sincere gratitude and highly appreciation to our distinguished keynote speakers, invited speakers, and beloved participants for uh, your attendance, active participation, smart and fruitful insights during the symposium. 
we do hope that all participants could share all knowledge, experience, best practices you have learned during the ISO fall to your colleague as well as you could implement uh, to improve the teaching learning quality at your schools or your home institutions. For senior Kitabin language recommendation and ideas developed during this symposium will be used as basis to develop better program or learning products suitable to the growth of technology to benefit teachers and students in Southeast Asia countries. Ladies and gentlemen, this meeting would not be successful without support from CKIL partners and all schools and institutions who have sent their best teachers, education personnel to attend this symposium. Thus, please extend our sincere gratitude to your good schools and institutions. Once again, thank you very much and please stay healthy during this pandemic situation. We hope that we can see you again next year in the 12th ISO fall and of course in other programs or activities of Simeo Kitabin language in the near future. Best wishes to you all and thank you very much and a very good afternoon. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Luanik. To all participants, before we close the session, we have several information for you. First, for those who have not submitted the evaluation form of the 11 isofall, we are waiting until 4 p.m. Second, we will only provide certificate to participants who have joined the symposium from day one and have completed the evaluation form. Lastly, we would like to thank you for your attention and cooperation during the symposium. We apologize for any inconvenience occurred during the event. See you next year. Good luck, Madam Director. Thank you. Terima kasih. Thank you. Bapak Ibu, terima kasih semuanya. Thank you. Uh... Ya, terima kasih Ibu. Terima kasih itu semuanya. Terima kasih ya, semuanya. Terima kasih semuanya para presenter. Ya, sampai jumpa dalam pertemuan ilmiah lain di Simeo Kitab in Language. Ya, siap. siap Ibu. Tetap dukung ya, kami ya, Bapak Ibu. Siap, Ibu. Siap. Terima kasih banyak. Terima kasih ya, banyak Bu. Terima kasih Bapak Ibu. Semoga kami ada kesempatan yang sama lagi ya, Ibu ya. Ya, amin. Ibu Ria, terima kasih. Sama-sama Ibu. Bisitanya tuh, ini yang aku minta ini. Creating opportunities by working hand in hand, we can accomplish all our dreams for a better quality of life. Is now within our reach. Let us take a step for our vision. So go, make it visualize for the people to grow. Bapak Bu Indrani.